Hey everyone, Arcologies here. I thought I would do a quick tutorial on how to get the uh, direct to disk or hard drive recording feature set up on the Akai S3000XL sampler. There wasn't a lot of information about this on the internet or YouTube, so I thought I would do a quick video to explain it. You'd think it would be straightforward, but it actually isn't. There is uh, one kind of weird thing you need to consider. And also, I think to have this feature available on your unit, you need to have the filter board installed. I, I had read that somewhere. Um, I am not 100% sure. There's really no way I can test it because I have the filter board installed and I'm not gonna take it out. If you find that you don't have the direct to disk feature, Feature, it may be because you don't have the filter board installed. So anyways, what you want to do first is you need to actually format the hard drive in a particular way to get this set up. So I'm gonna hit the save menu, okay? And then in the save menu, I'm gonna hit format. And the format up here, I'm gonna select hard drive, right? Cause that's how I wanna format. And then common sense to me was, oh, I'm gonna format the maximum size, okay? Cause I got an SD card in here. And then I want to do the maximum number of partitions because I wanna use everything for the sampler, right? That is actually not how it works for the disc uh, recording. Uh, what you need to do is this, this, uh, this setting under here, the 60 megabytes and 17 partitions, that is actually for the Akai's sound library, okay? And by sound library, that means kind of program samples, just everything that you, that you're gonna be saving and, and loading, okay, is your sound library. If you if you max out at 17, you're not leaving any remaining uh, partition space for the direct to disk recording, okay? I believe it does say this in the manual, but it wasn't straightforward to me, so again, I was kind of confused until I did it. So what you wanna do is, I think I set mine at 10. It gives me plenty of space for programs and samples, not a problem at all, but it also leaves some space remaining for the disk recorder, okay? And after, I'm not gonna do this because I've already formatted it, but after you do this, it'll actually tell you how much recording time you have available. So anyways, I've, say you've done that and you're, you've formatted it. Then the next thing you wanna do is I'm gonna go to the global menu, okay? In the global menu, I'm gonna hit the DD for disc, uh, disc, uh, directed disc recording. And in here, you can see that this is just the overview menu. Uh, you can see there where it says underneath this stereo option, you can see total and free right here, see total free. That is how the total disc time you have. So I have 20 minutes of recording time and I have 14 minutes free. To me, 20 minutes is fine, but if you need more, you can always adjust the partitions. Um, anyways, so I have my, uh, this is the overview menu. And then if I go into the DREC menu, direct recording menu, this is where you kind of set up the options for recording, okay? So the mode the mode default is actually uh, mono, so you just change this to stereo if you want to do a stereo recording. Uh, the source, it can be either analog or digital. I'm using analog inputs. Um, the start, I think defaults to like MIDI note and delay, but I just, I change it to input level much like you would on a sampler, okay? Uh, you can actually, the, the default is off for the effects bus. You can actually send your recording to the effects bus as you're recording it, which is super cool if you want to use the internal effects. This defaults to a minute. Um, however, I usually set it to seven because you can, you don't need to wait the entire seven minutes if you're recording stems or whatever, or an entire track, seven minutes is a good start. And then up here, the name, you would just go up there and name your take. And then when you're ready to record, you go to the take menu here. And in the take menu, you have your input threshold. Again, you can adjust the length if you want. So if you're ready to record, you hit the arm button, it'll say erase it, but that's whatever, because it's an existing take. It'll say recording analog, and then once you've finished, if you can either wait the entire seven minutes, or if you're only recording like five minutes of, uh, of audio or whatever, you can just record all of it and then hit finish, and it'll save it. And then you go to the play menu here. So you can adjust the vary speed, which is really cool. It will pitch it up and down, much like a turntable. Um, but it'll add, it kind of adds something to it. It's very subtle, but it's definitely something. So it's kind of cool. Um, and then you have, uh, you can you can also, when you play it, send it to the effects if you want by going down here. Play the take, you can just hold down the enter button and it'll play it. Um, obviously you may not want to, if you're bouncing a five, six minute recording or, or track, you may not want to hold the enter button down for six minutes, which is understandable, right? And to, do, to, to get over that, you just go to the song menu here, and then I hit song edit. And here I can adjust, put whatever take I want in here, right? So I'm just gonna do take eight. And once I have that all set up, I go back to the song menu here and then I hit the run button and the run will just play the take until it's done. And you can record it back into your DAW. Yeah, that's, uh, that's all there is to it. Take care, everyone.